I got an update. Another. It's not on Mantar. Calm down. Slow down, cowboy. But it is an update on somebody we've been talking about. Our friend Bruiser Bedlam. I got an email, and I won't mention this person's name or where they're from or anything, and I won't even read all of the email because it's somebody that used to know Johnny K-9. He calls him my lifelong friend, and he says enough things that I believe him. So I won't, I won't read a lot of the things that actually would just convict a motherfucker in open court of crimes. However, there were a few entertaining pieces that I thought that we would mention also. Because he sent me a list of just anecdotes of his time knowing Bruiser. Um, and it, 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 he had so many names, and most of them were wrestling. It's not like he, you know, was had aliases. And I, I assume he had some aliases that way also. But he wrestled as Johnny K-9. I named him Bruiser Bedlam. His real name was Ian. Uh, but we most people that knew him call him Johnny, right? This is one of them. John used his bald head to smash a car window while nude of some dude that was dating his ex-wife, Sheila. Um, <laughs> did she? <laughs> don't know why. He... Why was he and nude? Was... I don't know why. He would... <laughs> Maybe he came out of the house. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. He just didn't think. I don't know. But that would be dangerous to have that much broken glass around. Anyway. Uh, did you know Missing Link? Dewey Robertson was the one that got him into wrestling, and the the Bad Boys Gym in Burlington that that Bruiser always had. He that's why all of the Smoky Mountain guys, like ninety four, ninety five, had those Bad Boys Gym T shirts on because Bruiser would bring them down and give them the guys. That was his gym, and apparently he bought it from the Missing Link. I did not know that. So that's um. He could bench press 600 pounds when he was 21. He, his max was 650, and he could do 625 twice in a row. Uh, remember I said when we went to the gym that day to shoot that promo for uh, him and Randy Savage in Knoxville that he started warming up just a time or two with like five-something because we were running late, right? Um, here, here's a story of him in Subway. A Subway restaurant employee asked him, to, well, okay, this is Miss. Asked him to out his shirt on. Basically, pu no, put his shirt on. I'm sorry. Asked him to put his shirt on and refused him service. So John got up and escorted everyone out and locked the door. And at the threat of pulling the guy's eye out and making him a Cyclops, had him make a sub sandwich for us, which he paid for and then tipped $100 as people waited to get in outside. He told the young guy, buy a couple of these geeks a sub and then left <laughs> <laughs> so at least he didn't steal the sub um and he also says the hell's angels never took johnny out because he was so high profile his antics kept the heat off of them although he hated <laughs> he thoroughly hated them but he he single-handedly made the hell's angels popular i guess what did he do? He tried to bomb a police station, right? Well, there's something about that. All right. Um, He's dead. I mean, we could say well, it. Well, and, and actually, there's going to be, a, this has actually been revealed, I think, now. One of the episodes of Dark Side of the Ring this year on Vice is going to be on Bruiser, and it was at my suggestion. Uh, and now that I'm hearing back from him that it may be one of the highlight episodes of the season. Uh, but his... Second wife, Tracy's best friend, was living with the mad bomber, Jerry, that actually made the bombs for the Sudbury, Ontario police station John ordered to be bombed. Uh, is according to this totally unsolicited email. The mad bomber? Steam P. New, Steam P. New, Steam P. New. Um, well, there's also... <laughs> um, <laughs> there is a claim that he's the one who orchestrated the assassin... Are you an assassin, Kabuki? Are you an errand boy? The assassin to, or let's say the 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 cleanup man to take care of the situation with the lawyer and her husband, who was uh, going to testify against a former mob boss or whatever. But Bruiser was arrested, but he got acquitted and actually sued the cops on that and was successful enough in, in that, I believe. But anyway, um. Well, there you go. No, there has to be more. Come on. There has to be more stuff. He lost, he lost two toes on one of his feet when he, he was 
He was riding his motorcycle in sandals and a pair of gym shorts when he was hit by a, in a Corvette by a woman. And, but he, he never came after her because she was attractive. <laughs> uh, let's see. And, uh, yeah, well, he, uh, I don't understand this line. I think it may be there's a, the, the, the typing is off here. It says fought Aryan as the leader in Canada's roughest prison. But I don't think you you don't fight our I think it's fought Aryans uh, is is what that's supposed to be, because I don't think you go into prison. OK, I'm going to fight Aryan. OK, I'm going to fight Crip for blood or whatever. Right. It's I'm not sure what that terminology is there. And uh, apparently, just while we're at it, Bruiser's father may have been connected to a doctor from Ontario that was accused of being a Romanian Nazi. Um, but we don't know anything about that. Every time we talk about Bruce of Battle, I always have to say this. Met him when I was 14. Really nice guy. <laughs> yeah, nice guy. To us. That's, that is what this program, I told them, I said, I want to get, I want you to get to the bottom of this. How everybody in my life that has ever met this guy is like, oh, what a great fucking guy. And you hear these other things from his other life. And I've, I'm trying to get him to reconcile those. And we, we haven't got to the root of the matter yet. 